Welcome to the webinar. This is episode six, and in this episode, our theme is Canvas, Using Data to Drive Instruction. Our goal is to provide you with ideas on how to support your families and students in their digital education space. The Nevada Department of Education is providing this video as a public service, and it is provided for informational purposes only. It is not a statement of official state policy, nor should it be construed as legal advice on any subject matter. It is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of state policy. Reference to any specific product, process, service, or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by the Nevada Department of Education. The views expressed by participants are their own and their appearance in this video does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Views and opinions expressed by employees of the Nevada Department of Education or Nevada educators are those of the individual and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the Nevada Department of Education or the view of the state of Nevada. If you are joining us for the first time, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Audra Armand Richardson, who has rejoined our district office as a digital integration specialist and has served as an elementary school strategist, CCSD professional development instructor, and has expertise in web design, Google for Education, and blended learning. Thank you. I am so glad to be back and allow me to introduce my colleague and friend, Ingrid Johnson who spent many years in a middle school computer classroom before moving into several positions involving digital coaching and blended learning integrations. She is well versed in both Google and Canvas and is QM certified. So we took a month off as our district prepared to go hybrid. So we took a month off as our district prepared to go hybrid but we are glad to be back and focusing on using the data components of Canvas, specifically for the sorting feature within grades, using the people feature, and new analytics reporting. Through the use of this video and monthly step-by-step -step infographics, it is our goal to provide you with support for utilizing Canvas and other tools within your own digital classroom. So let's get started with some data talk. Many educators and administrators might not be aware of all the data features that there are in Canvas and how these can be used to drive our instruction and support our students. So today we are going to hone in on two questions. What data is collected in my Canvas course? And how can I use the data to drive my instruction? Ingrid, many Canvas educators and administrators are familiar with the gradebook in Canvas, but can you walk us through a helpful data feature? Yes, each and every time a graded assignment, quiz, or discussion is added to the gradebook, educators have a number of tools available to them. By clicking on the three dot ellipsis menu, the available tools are visible. One of those tools is called sort by. Selecting sort by allows educators to sort the column of grades from low to high or high to low, as well as missing and late work. This is extremely helpful to educators. For example, when sorting grades from low to high, um, it allows teachers to create groupings for intervention support, scaffolding, and enrichment. Using this feature can also provide the information needed to pivot your instruction and meet the immediate needs of your students. Making adjustments to instruction based on assessments is one of our instructional NEPF standards, which is another reason to utilize this tool. This is just one location of data within Canvas. Um, Audra, what's another location? The people feature of the course menu is another valuable tool. This is a hidden gem both for instructors and administrators. By selecting people, Canvas instructors are directed to a list of students enrolled in the course and can add or modify enrollments. But did you know that by selecting a student's hyperlinked name, instructors are provided with a snapshot of the student's grades in the course, participation, and page views. This is visible on the slide on the right side in addition, the instructor can select grades at the top right of the pop-up menu, 
This allows the instructor to see a full list of all grades associated with this course, as well as categories such as assessments and any weighted categories an instructor has created. This is a very powerful tool when conferencing with parents about their child's academics, as well as when meeting with individual students to set goals. One last feature within People is new analytics reporting. This is visible on the right side at the top of that pop-out student snapshot. Depending on your district, this could also read as analytics. You may want to turn on new analytics as a feature because there are some great reporting capabilities. Ingrid, how does an educator turn on new analytics in Canvas? Well, in order to turn on and access new analytics, you will select settings from the course menu. Next, select feature options and finally new course analytics. Again, new analytics provides a richer analytics experience for course grades, weekly online activity, and individual student view. Once you have added new analytics to your home page, you will notice it is on the right sidebar menu. Again, new analytics is managed by the new course and user analytics feature option in the account settings feature option tab. This feature option is located at the course level and defaults to allow which means new analytics can be enabled on a course by course basis. If you have trouble with turning this feature on, check with your site Canvas administrator. Once you click on new analytics, you are navigated to this reporting dashboard shown on the slide. The opening report is called the course grade. This is a great snapshot of your students grades. The average score is shown at the top along on the bottom, you will notice the icons of the various assignment types, such as the rocket is a quiz assignment, and the blue dots represent the average grade by assignment. This can be filtered by assignment type by unchecking the appropriate box, or instructors can data enter an assignment name, student name, or section to view a grades overview at these levels. Pretty powerful reporting if I do say so myself. Instructors can click on weekly online activity to see the next data set of data. Ingrid, what is on that weekly overview activity report? The weekly online activity allows instructors to view the average number of page views and participation for a course using an interactive chart or table. Instructors can also filter analytic results to compare the average course activity with a specific section or student. Data for individual students can be accessed and table displays viewed. Audra, can you tell us more about what's included in that? Student reports provides a deeper look at student activity. Instructors can see when the last time a student participated in the course, as well as the last time a page was viewed. Total number of pages viewed and participations or submissions is also visible. Again, this can be filtered by typing a section or student name into the provided field. Or click on a student's name to see all the reports we have discussed, course grades, weekly on activity, as well as a communication report. Let's dive a little deeper into that communication report, Ingrid. In addition to participation metrics, communication data between the teacher and student can be viewed. So instructors can click on new analytics, students, and then select a student name in order to see an overview of the number of messages sent between them and the student within their Canvas inbox. Instructors can also run reports in Canvas, including missing assignments, late assignments, excused assignments, or a class roster and course activity. These can download as a CSV file and be filtered as needed. Again, this might be a great reporting tool for conferencing with parents or students as a missing grade report can be created, filtered by the student's name, and the portion related to that student may be printed or emailed directly to the student. This is a great way to communicate about missing work as all educators get those questions around report card time. Those are our ideas for the month of March. We want to encourage you to take a look at the materials that we have created to go with this session. 
We have a two pager for you this month because there were a lot of features to cover. These can be found at bit.ly backslash NV collab March 2021. If you have questions concerning content, please reach out to us at our email addresses A-A-R-M-A-N-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-N dot N-V D-L-C at gmail dot com or I-J-O-H-N-S-O-N dot N-V D-L-C at gmail dot com. Be on the lookout each month as we continue this digital adventure and release interactive infographics on how to use Canvas with students. Information can be found on the Nevada Digital Learning website. This recording is available in closed captioning on Nevada Ready YouTube's channel, bit.ly slash nde-dl.playlist. Remember, it's case sensitive. Thank you for joining this month. We look forward to chatting with you next month. Thanks again.